bit Jade Blair here, your mm -mm calendar worker online and in person. And today we're talking about why on earth men see escorts. And I get this question all the time. Why don't they just go to a bar or go on Tinder and just hook up with someone? It's free. Well, there's a lot of reasons in my six year experience. Number one, discretion. Look, I'm not gonna lie to you, the vast majority of my clients have wives or committed girlfriends and they cheat on them with me. I don't advocate for it, I don't encourage it, but ultimately I am not responsible for another person's decisions or actions. I've made a whole video on it, it's linked somewhere around here. But they wanna go to someone who is very likely to be discreet and not try to contact their other partner like a hookup may do. Now, discretion and confidentiality in this industry is a major foundation, right? Unfortunately, there are bad apples, as there are in every industry, who will occasionally leak clients' details for no good reasons. And yet, there are sometimes good reasons to leak a client's details. That might be going to the police if that client has attacked the worker, right? Understandable. If the client is committing a horrific crime against the worker, they have every right to go and seek justice and vice versa. So does the client. But usually we do not ever support clients' details being shared. And when you see this happen, you will also see most other workers be completely outraged at the worker who has broken this confidentiality agreement because trust is such a foundational part of this whole industry and making this whole industry work. Clients might find discretion an incredibly important factor in choosing their sexual partners, not just because they're cheating, but just because they're humans and they live in this society. Right, sex is a private thing. We don't tell our bosses about it. We don't talk about it with our families. Usually we don't want anyone to know any of the details about our sex life other than our sexual partners and occasionally some close friends that you might be talking to. So it's very understandable that even if a person is not cheating, they don't want their sex life out there. I've also had a lot of clients who have quite high level jobs, whether that be politicians, CEOs, or sometimes they're really high up in churches that they just don't want their private, confidential lives being leaked to the public. And that's understandable. Everyone deserves the right to privacy around their sex life. So paying someone where you have this complicit confidentiality agreement is going to be quite beneficial for clients. They're not going to be able to get that in terms of a like Tinder hookup. And when they're seeing an escort, and when they're seeing an escort, it's also mutually assured destruction, right? Most escorts don't want other people to know that they're escorting. I am very much the exception to this rule. Most escorts are incredibly discreet and they hide their own identity from the world and they don't tell anyone what they're doing because in society, we hate sex workers. We hate women who have sex, right? It's incredibly taboo. So if an escort leads a client's details, they'll also be outing themselves. So clients can often feel a little bit of a surety that they're safe, their details are safe with an escort. Number two, the fear of rejection. Imagine you're a man in your early 30s. You have a shower, you trim your beard, put on some nice smelling cologne, get all dressed up, and your intention is to hit a bar to hook up with a woman that you've never met before. How likely do you think that a woman is actually going to give you even the time of day just to have a conversation, let alone get in an Uber and go hook up with you? Probably not very many. Unfortunately, we live in a society where women are punished for being sexually adventurous and for having multiple partners. And how often do I get comments on my videos saying that I'm loose or used chewing gum? Where on the other hand, men typically get cheered on for having lots of partners. They're a legend if they have a lot of sex. There's also a safety component, right? Women, whether right or wrong, I don't even wanna get into that, have been conditioned to fear men. 
right? So they are much less likely to go home with a man that they've never met before and have very little information on. Where men have not had that same conditioning, so they're usually a lot more open. They have an imbalance, right? There's a lot of men who want to go and have sex with no attachments. But there's very few women who will commit to that. Maybe they want it, but they're not willing to commit to that because there's high social stigma and also high safety stakes. So if you're a man going with this approach or even just messaging people on Tinder, you're going to have to get rejected heaps before you actually find one person who will give you the time of day. And even if you know that that rejection is not personal, it still hurts, right? We're all human beings, no one likes to be rejected and it can really weigh down on you after a while. So a lot of men would prefer just to hire an escort who they know is going to be happy to see them because they're being paid for it. They feel like their labor is being adequately compensated for and they're being respected. So they're very happy to see their client as opposed to trying to chat up 30 women in a bar. And this brings us to our third point, convenience. Often it's just way more time consuming to try to hook up with someone. You're going to have to go back and forth on Tinder, maybe buy them some drinks, buy them dinner before they're eventually going to get into bed with you. We're an escort. All you have to do is a few back and forth messages and the time is secured. Sometimes it can even be cheaper to hire an escort once you consider all of the money men have to put into these dating profiles, buying drinks and buying dinner for the women that they're trying to pursue. Number four, safety. Look, I'm going to be honest, with men, the safety in and around having sexual partners is wildly different. Like some men, it's incredibly important. Some men don't even think about it. But... Here in Australia, particularly in legalized and decriminalized areas, sex workers are often your safest sexual partners. We have the lowest rates of STIs, plus the highest rates of condom usage and testing. Therefore, statistically, you're less likely to catch anything from a sex worker than you are just a general hookup. And this is because sex workers really care about our health. We cannot work if we get sick. And not only can we not work, our reputation, our business reputation can get completely destroyed if we catch something and it gets known to the public. So we take it very, very seriously. Number five, emotional detachment. Sex workers are there to get paid. We do find fulfillment in making sure our client has an amazing experience and sometimes we also get to finish, which is amazing. But ultimately, it is a job. So we are there trying to turn a profit, which means we're very unlikely to get emotionally attached to the client. It's just not in our mind. It's not something we're seeking when we're interacting with this person. So when you're not seeking it or even seeing it as an option, you're just not going to form that same attachment that you would with someone you're just sleeping with as a friends with benefits kind of situation. And a lot of men like this. It is nice to be able to express yourself sexually without also having the expectations of a strong friendship or even a relationship in terms of a romantic sense. Someone can absolutely be ready and willing to have sex, but not be ready and willing to have all of the expectations and responsibilities that come with romantic relationships or even like, so hiring someone and having that emotional detachment can be the perfect solution. And this is also a really great solution for couples wanting to do a threesome. If you bring in a friend into that situation, it can get really awkward and really messy emotionally very quickly. A lot of people do struggle to keep emotions out of sex. So hiring a professional is the way to go. And lastly, opportunity. Sometimes our sexual partners, whether that be a romantic partner, whether that be a hookup or friends with benefits, they're just not into these same things that we are. Maybe the client wants to experience something they just haven't been able to experience with anyone else because they've never met anyone else in another context that was willing to do that for them. There are sex workers that are highly specialized in certain activities and certain kinks that actually require quite a lot of experience and sometimes even quite formal training to do safely. So if they're seeing a professional, there is a duty of care there and they can make sure that they're going to have a really great premium experience rather than bumbling through it with someone who's not quite into it and doesn't quite know what they're doing. 
I find that this is quite common with clients who have any sort of medical kink that involves needles or catheterization, or even clients who are into pregnancy fetishes or breastfeeding fetishes. They require a very particular person with a particular attributes or a skill set to be able to fulfill that for them, and that can be really hard just to find out in the streets on a random whim. But I don't know, have I missed any? I am not a client of sex workers, I am just a sex worker myself, so I am assuming a couple things here. Let me know if I've missed anything down below, and as always, check out my other channel where I try and some lingerie, it's lots of fun, and see the links to see all of me. Bye for now.